Welcome to Virtualize Everything. So I realized it's been about a month since I've shot a video, or published a video rather. I've shot two in the meantime, and necessarily one of them I plan on publishing soon, but we're having problems with our WordPress website that hosts our blog, and unfortunately, I seem not to have the SSH keys that were set up for me to get in and make the changes myself. So I've been waiting on Mr. Editor to go ahead and make the changes or at least get me into the website so I can fix it. And in the meantime, I'm unable to upload some images, so I don't want to publish that particular video until that happens. But enough with that. I thought I would shoot a little bit of a vlog style post and this might be something I do a little bit more, I don't know, about what I've been doing because I've been taking a class that's offered here in the state that I'm in about some web development and other programming stuff and working on building out my own portfolio. And in order to host some of this, I've been using Docker to host it and I thought maybe it might be a good idea to show you a little bit about Docker. Now, from time to time, I've been pretty hard on Docker because I don't necessarily like a lot of the stuff on Docker Hub. I like to build most of my stuff. I feel that it provides a little bit more knowledge about A, what I'm using and doing, but B, about what's in the software that I've built. So I've stayed away from it. In this particular incident, or incident, incidents, I've um, decided that I wanted to use it. It is a great tool for use in a lot of situations. So I'm using Docker and NGNX or NGINX to host everything. So let's go over and look at what's needed to host a web page with NGINX inside of Docker and we'll make a Docker image and we'll go on from there. The first thing I wanna do is show you the web page actually. And you can see all my other screens up here and I'm gonna take you through some of them and show them to you here in a minute. But here's the working website and you can notice by the URL that it is an internal website and it's hosted off a VM at the moment that I use for doing some of the Docker work on my Proxmox server. So basically this is a school project and we have to use the school's template and the school's image for the assignment and write all the code to make it all work. I'm not gonna go through a lot of the code in this project, but in turn, I'm gonna use it because I was setting up a Docker image and it's actually set up now, but I wanna show you the process of actually how you build your own image, integrate files into the image, and then build it out or copy the files into the image, and then you can run it. And I think this adds a lot more of a personal touch to your Docker projects. And I don't know, it, if it was shown to me in better detail with a, with an understanding, I think I would have wouldn't have been so hard on Docker for so long. So enough rambling. Let's get on to looking at some of the code. So here's the code window here and I'm noticing that you can't see my mouse so I'm going to do my best to explain this using my cursor. So the first thing we're doing here is we're going to call our image. Now NGINX has an image that we're going to download from Docker Hub so we write from and then the image NGINX. Now we need to make our app directory so we're going to run make directory mkdir command and we're going to make the slash app then i'm going to make this slash app this app slash images file for future it's not needed for the code at the moment but i will want it here in a little bit for my project so if you're following along you can also see that we can make more than our app directory then we're going to set our working directory to the slash app and we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy in our file for this website. So in this particular website, I'm using an HTML file and it, we're calling it the index.html file. And we're going to save that at the location of USR share NGINX HTML. We're also going to bring in my CSS file and my JS file because we're going to be using some JavaScript in here. Now, again, I'm not planning to take you through this website, although I'll show you some of the code just to show you that it's there um, and it was created, but those are the files. So in order to copy them in, I use the copy command. Now these files all have to be in the same folder or directory as your uh, Docker file. 
And if they are in a subfolder, we have to specify that subfolder and we can do that. Now, I also am running a copy file and I'm copying the nginx.config file to etc nginx config d slash default config. So this is the default configuration con for our nginx docker image out of the box. And then I'm going to expose port 80 because this is a website, unsecured website, obviously, but a website nonetheless. And we are going to communicate with that using our web browser on or 80. All right, so the next thing we want to look at is the nginx configuration, and this is actually quite simple. So it's server, curly brackets, and then it's listen on port 80, because we want to listen on the web browser standard port 80 for an unsecured web page. My location is slash because it's going to be my home page or my index.html page. My root is going to be the root to the standard path where we uploaded our index.html file. And the next line is index or the main page and we're going to call that index.html as its name and then we close it off with two more curly brackets, just like you would in most programming languages like JavaScript or Java or any of the rest of it. Now, here is our CSS file, and I'm not going to walk you through this, but so you know, this is kind of style scripts. This is how we add some of the color and fancy features and or more or less the pretty looks and place things how we want because if we were to run just our standard HTML, we would be just basically creating lines of stuff. If you've worked with HTML, you, I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Then there's our JavaScript that we're using to add some of the behaviors and do our math in the page. All right, so now I have all my files created. They're all saved in the same folder and they're so everything's ready to go. But how do I get them to my server or to my location to build my Docker image? And in my case, I'm not doing that on my native system. You can do that on your system. And a lot of people do choose to. But instead, I'm doing them on a server that's housed here in my closet that we run on Proxmox. As you know, if you follow this channel at all, we do a lot of Proxmox content, and I do love that for virtualization. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a tool called SCP here on my Mac, and I'm going to enter the command, which is basically the destination of my program that I'm calling Dragon Cal here on my desktop. And then we're going to use our username on our server plus our IP address to the server here locally. And then I want to put it in a folder called home slash VE. So after the standard kind of SSH layout of this command here, VE at IP address of the server, I place a colon and then the location where I want it. And you can also notice the dash R attribute here that's been added. And that's for a recursive type of command. And so everything inside of this folder will be copied over to the server. And you can see where I've actually done this on this exact folder as I was creating everything earlier. So I could show you the web page here at the beginning of this video. But we can go ahead and run this command again. And we're not using an SSH key here at the moment because it's just kind of our in-house test server. And sometimes I like to jump around computers and not manage all those SSH keys. I reinstall stuff and use VMs and do all kinds of different stuff like that depending on my mood and what I want to work on. Anyways, enough with that. I There's the folder. The files all uploaded and so we can drop we can jump over here to the SSH window and right now I'm kind of looking at the server's log because our our server is running as I showed you a minute ago so I'm just going to press control C close this all out you can see that we're already in the dragon cal folder but you would just use cd and the folder name my case dragon cal to get to my location here now if I run ls here you can see that I have the docker file and notice the capitalization on the D, but no capitalization on file. So that's kind of important. I, from what I've experienced, Docker 
file has to be spelled correctly with the same name with the capital D in order for the commands to work. Then we have our index HTML file, our N Nginx config file, our script.js, and our styles.css file. So there's all the files that we showed there earlier in the Docker file. And if I bring up the Docker file again, you can see all of our copies here, one after another. If I bring up my cursor, you can see the three lines right here where I copy all of those files in. And here's the line to copy the N Nginx config file and their destination. And you can notice that I'm using the command copy to do that. You can also notice as I create other folders inside of my image that I use the run keyword, and then I'm going to run an mkdir command, which if you've made directories inside of Linux, you know that that's your standard command for doing so in at least Debian-based Linux distributions. I am I basically stick to Debian stuff myself. I don't venture outside of it. Kali, Debian, Ubuntu is kind of where I live. So maybe some of your other distributions, I know I've touched on them before and looked at them, and they might be different. I've found different things in them. Anyways, so back to our SSH, we can then run a command that's going to copy all of these over, produce an image that we can run. So to take you through that command, it's going to be docker build, and we're going to use dash t, and then we're going to give it a name, in my case, dragon cal, and then we're going to get put a space and a period to tell them to tell Docker that everything is ended. This is what we want. So, and notice the pseudo at the beginning. Some systems, if you've given the Docker the right rights, don't require it. I don't like to give Docker those rights because generally I didn't understand some of the documentation around giving it the rights, and I found it just as easy and more understandable in my mind to use sudo. Go ahead and copy below if I'm like completely off base or wrong, but I feel that it it's a little bit safer to use sudo in my, in my beliefs here. So with that, we're gonna press enter. I've already made this, so you can see it ran quite quickly here, but if we scroll through, we can see I made the app folder, I made the image folder, I changed my work directory to app, then I copied in the index, copied in the style CSS, copied in the script.js, and then I copied the an X config file, I exposed port 80, I successfully built the image, and I successfully tagged the image Dragon Cal, and then it's the latest version. So there is a way that as you get a little bit more advanced, you can keep track of some of your versions here. Um, so then we are going to run a command to run it and at least test run it. I like to run with the logs. Sometimes you make a mistake, especially when you do a lot of work at once in coding. And it's really nice to have your log so you can kind of watch what's going on. And Docker being kind of a container that set off, it can be hard to see some of the logs. There are ways to log into Docker. And if you want to know more on that, we can do a more in-depth video of Docker. But today was supposed to be more of like a vlog of what I was doing and building images with Docker. So sudo docker run dash p, and then we're going to expose port 80 on our server. So we're going to proxy port 80 from our actual server IP address, which isn't our Docker container IP address. If you've set up Docker, you know Docker creates a bridge inside of our container that all the images use to get internet. And then um, our main VM here has its IP address, which is what we're SSH'd into, 192, 168, 50, 21 on, and we're going to communicate with that on port 80. So our Docker, can, we're opening port 80 in the proxy, so proxying it to our actual host, and in our container, we're also using port 80 as we exposed earlier in our Docker file. And then we're going to run the image Dragon Cal. So if I press enter here, you can see we fire up and we're waiting to communicate with it on our browser. So if we go back to my desktop here and we open my web browser, I can create a new tab and I can browse. If I don't fat finger keys to our server, you can see our web page load. And if we go back to our SSH connections, you can see that we 
actually communicated with it. So with that being said, now we have a working server. But what if we don't want this window up? What if we want it running in the background? Well, you could close your SSH connection and that would work. That's somewhat annoying if you want to continue to do things. So we can hit Control C here. And now when we run our command, we're going to add the attribute of dash D. And so we're going to run run dash D dash P, basically the same command. And this time it's just going to present us with a string. Everything's running. But if we were to go back to our desktop and go here, we can refresh it. We could also close our tab, create our tab and load it. And you can see that it's all running now. So we can go off and do the rest of our thing and use Docker. I hope this gave you a little bit of a familiarization with with making Docker files and using Docker image maybe inspired you to try to host some of your own web pages either internally or externally with Docker and a better idea of generally how to use Docker because it is a powerful tool and I wanted to create this a because it's a powerful virtualization tool and powerful for using a lot of what we do but B because I myself didn't have a great understanding of it until recently when I just said you know what? I'm going to use it because it sounds like it would work really well for my current project and work how I wanted it to work and allow me to keep my server somewhat more clean with the stuff I'm doing and so on. So I'm going to use it. And I set out to learn more about it. And after I understood more, I felt a lot more comfortable about it and understand generally why so many people use it so much. With that, have a good night. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you'd like to support us in making further videos like this, and have a good night. Bye.